when you look at this situation overall, no matter what it is, Jim, these scammers, they latch on quickly and they do not miss an opportunity, do they? No, they don't. I mean, they're really confidence men when you, when you come down to it. And so they do a great job of adjusting their tactics to, you know, whatever's relevant to make it sound, you know, very legitimate and, 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 um, you know, like it, like, like it would be, um, you know, kind of, uh, kind of relevant, right? So that's what they do. How many unwanted calls, robocalls, have we had in Texas this year? And where do we stand nationally, Jim? Yeah, so Texas, uh, Texas has received. Uh, let me look at the let me look at the numbers. So year to date, uh, Texas has received about 129 million uh, unwanted calls through uh, for the, through the first couple of weeks of August. And then if you look at Dallas in particular, usually you're about 24% of that total to uh, to Texas. So you know, think about 38 million, uh, you know, unwanted calls for the, for the DFW uh, area. When it comes to these robo calls and the scams that are related to the pandemic, what are some of the categories we're talking about? What are the most popular ones? Yeah. So, that, so I, a new one that's really kind of cropped up is more around contact tra- tracing. So, you know, obviously, you know, the, obviously the, uh, uh, legitimate uh, health providers are trying to, you know, do contact tracing, trying to stop the the, the, the spread of the of the virus, and so they're legitimately trying to figure out, okay, what contacts if I if I if I come in contact with, so I can let them know, get them tested, etc. However, what the contact tracing scams have, have popped up are they're saying, hey, we'll send you a a test kit for fifty dollars. You know, uh, obviously, um, you don't have to pay for those, but, you know, it's a good way to scam people out of money. It sounds legit. They'll say, hey, Chris, uh, you know, a contact of yours is, has, has con- you know, contracted, you know, COVID-19, and, you know, we're, we want to send you out a test kit. Well, you know, obviously, you can kind of go, go to any testing site and do that for free, but, you know, if they can scam you out of $50, then, you know, then, you know, that's, that's good for them. Unfortunately, bad for the the consumer because they're actually not going to get the test and they're going to be scammed out of fifty dollars. That's that's one of the more popular ones we've seen. We've also seen you know student loan forgiveness. Student loan, obviously, you know several trillion dollars worth a worth a debt there. Um, you know them they they'll typically call and say um, you know targeting college students and saying that you know they can reduce your debt due to the the COVID-19 situation will give you a better interest rate, et cetera, and then they'll, they'll want to get your, your personal information. So as you can see, as I mentioned before, as I mentioned before, they sound very legit. How, however, you know, you know, they're trying to scam people out of money or personal information so that they can then, um, uh, you know, you know, benefit from that. And so far we've seen, you know, the FTC's reported, you know, over 125,000 cases due to, COVID seventy million dollars in losses year to date, so it's 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 a pretty significant number, and and unfortunately they're you know they're making money off of uh, off of unknowing people. Are the elderly Jim more likely to be targeted in these scams? Yeah, absolutely. So we've seen that we well whether they be fake you know fake cures or or test kits etc. Um, we have seen you know that the elderly are receive you know uh, uh, you know more than seven or eight robocalls a month typically we see more robocalls to waterline numbers which is um numbers which is um which is you know what the what the elderly are going to have so you know again if it sounds legitimate they're going to be they're going to be targeted and and unfortunately the dollar amount is typically much higher with with the elderly than it is with a uh, with with somebody that's younger Yes, I would say, Jim, that more than 90% of the time at our house when the phone rings, it is a number we don't recognize, and it's somebody we don't want to talk to. Is it a better idea if you don't recognize the number, just let the thing ring? 
Yeah, absolutely. So absolutely. So there's that that that's a great suggestion. One, you don't know if they're harvesting for numbers to see if that's a legitimate number. We have seen some scams where it appears that that's what they're trying to do to find legitimate numbers so that they can pass those on to other organizations. Uh, secondly, uh, there's a thing called a Wangiri scam, uh, which, is, which is Japanese for uh, one ring. They'll ring you once in the middle of the night, and then uh, if you call them back, you'll, it's typically a number that's you know out of the Caribbean, and you'll you'll uh, uh, end up being charged long distance charges. So again, if you don't recognize the number, you know I wouldn't I, w- I wouldn't pick up the call. If it's a legitimate, you know, enterprise that's trying to get in touch with you, then they're going to leave a voicemail, very clearly stating who they are, and it'll be, you know, you know, very easy to know whether I want to actually call that customer or call that uh, enterprise back or not. And tell me how TNS plays a role in the solution here. Yeah, so TNS actually uh, is a sees, sees a lot of network information because we provide uh, hubbing services and routing services. So we see over a billion, billion and a half calls a day that are intercarrier, um, and we provide robocall detection solutions to the top wireline companies and the top wireline companies, um, and and so all the analytics behind you know potential spam or potential fraud, you know, we we help the carriers you know identify these bad calls, either block them in the network uh, outright if if we know that it's definitely a bad actor, if that actor then we'll, you know, warn the customer um, that, that, you know, be on, you know, you know, be on your guard for this, for this call when it's coming in, because it may potentially be somebody trying to um, fraudulently take money from you or get your personal information, personal information. Jim, we appreciate the great work you all do. Thank you so much for the time and the great information today. We look forward to talking to you again. All right. Sounds great, Chris. Thanks. Have a good weekend. All right. You too. Bye-bye.